Hello everyone, welcome to another Reaper blog tutorial. Reaper 5.92 has just come out, and it's another small bug fix update, but there's a lot of cool stuff in here as well. Let's start off with the ruler. Support drawing ruler by measures, snapping grid by measures. So right now I've got my ruler set to measures, beats, minutes, and seconds. We can change this to measures, beats, and that makes it a little more simplified there. My grid lines are on a whole note or four beats. And in 4.4, four, that means that there's a grid line on every measure. If we change this to a, uh, let's say 6.4, time signature, the grid lines don't line up with the measure lines, right? There's six beats to make a measure, but setting the grid lines or the snap settings to one means that it's going to be at, um, at four whole beats. Let's look in the grid settings. And in here, we now have this new option, measure. So setting that to measure will work with any time signature. So we can set this to, I don't know, seven, eight. And those grid lines, the measure grid lines are going to line up. Uh, let's set this back to four, four, and it all works. And a while back, we got this option in appearance to divide the arrange view vertically every one measure. So that's going to make sure that that works correctly in all time signatures now. Put this to 5.4. Looks like that. There's these different colored grid lines for each measure. If I set this on 1, you can see that the grid line is here but the uh, divided ruler is going to be on measures. Next, we're going to open up the MIDI editor, and this is a really quick change they've done here in the file menu and for when we're looking at the MIDI note name section. They've now renamed MIDI note name, the menu, load, save, and undo. Just the names of these items in the menu are now going to be MIDI note CC name because um, that more accurately represents what you can actually do in this menu. You've always been able to load CC names through here. Uh, now it's just more clear. You used to just say load note names. When we're using the render queue, writing BWF metadata and including the project file name in the BWF data, there was a bug when you add that to the render queue. The bug was that you would get the temporary project from the render queue as the project file name in that rendered item instead of the original project. So that's now fixed. Also, when we're using the online render and we're changing the project sample rate, if we were going from 48 to 44.1, it's now going to wait a few seconds with a little pop-up window telling you what's happening so that all of your external devices can sync with the new sample rate. There were situations where uh, external gear needs a few seconds to actually switch sample rates. And if rendering had already started, it would be all messed up. So now it waits a little bit and then this window automatically disappears and your render will start. With the video processor, they've now improved the updating of the TCP parameters, which means that if you're automating any of these controls in the video processor and this window is closed, these um, the track panel uh, indicators for the value is going to update uh, as long as you're in read mode. And it used to be that these parameters in the TCP wouldn't update if the video window wasn't active. I was running into a few problems where I was automating uh, copying settings from different parts of the project, and these parameters wouldn't show the correct value when I jumped to it. So I was having trouble with automating. I use the video processor a lot for making these videos, so that's a really big helpful change for me. If we go into reaper.ini in the reaper's resource folder and scroll down to the reaper video section, uh, that's about line 1553, um, there's this new option SMP equals, it'll say zero or one or default. 
And it's an experimental option that they're trying out with um, multiprocessing for video processors. I haven't had a chance to use this yet. Today, as I'm editing this video you're watching now, will be the first time I'm trying it out. I can't say much more about it, but it's just something that should improve performance, something that they would like to test. And uh, so if you were doing video editing or using the video processor for anything else, maybe give this a try. Go into reaper.ini, change this line from off to on using a one, save the file, relaunch Reaper, and it, it might make a difference for you. You might get a little better performance, you might get a little worse, but it's something that we should be testing. And that's it for what's new in Reaper 5.92. If you've missed any of the previous update videos, there's a playlist of uh, pretty much all of the updates as they come out. There's been so many awesome features. A lot of people miss this stuff if they're not watching the videos. So you'll want to check that out. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. You can join our Facebook group, Reaper Blog Community. You can support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.